Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be in the company of such a distinguished group of alumni here and friends this evening. Susan, who has led the College of Liberal Arts as dean for over 20 years, and in many ways, Susan is truly the liberal arts leader. I know that, is student, that Susan is already starting to cringe. I can see it. <laughs> because this, this part of the program was not included in her package. <laughs> when I was uh, named the dean of the graduate school in 1995, Susan was already hard at work uh, closely uh, developing with, uh, with faculty and department heads and alumni, the uh, really strategies, the, the great strategies that would make the College of Liberal Arts one of the best in the country. Uh, Susan was also busy cementing her reputation as a truly scary driver. Uh, uh, as I said, Susan has been at Penn State for more than 20 years. She probably has more points than that on her driver's license. <laughs> Many of you have heard the stories of Susan's endangering staff while she was driving them around in rented vehicles on unfamiliar highways while she talked on her cell phone, <coughs> ate her lunch, and floored the, the gas pedal. <laughs> uh, fortunately, Susan has minimized her danger to the community by riding her bike to work, uh, even in the winter, when she has been known to put chains on her tires for safety. <laughs> Uh, of course, surviving her vehicular encounters is nothing compared to Susan's record of longevity in academia. Only a handful of academic deans have previously reached the 20-year mark, and none of them has been a woman. Susan is a role model, a pioneer, a visionary. She is also passionate about sports. She closely follows the Nittany Lions football, women's basketball, and women's volleyball and she rarely misses a home volleyball game. And she is quite vocal about the prospects for the team and their sorry opponents. <laughs> it is this type of decisiveness and enthusiasm that characterizes Susan's leadership in the college. Over two decades, Susan has worked closely with department heads and senior faculty to develop effective strat strategic plans and to focus key res resources on programs with great potential. As a result, several of the college's core programs have risen to the top 10 in their fields. Kathy just mentioned the number one ranking for the anthropology department. The English department experienced, experienced a meteoric rise from 42nd in 1995 to number five alongside Princeton, Harvard, Stanford, and Michigan. That's not bad company, is it? <laughs> Virtually all of Penn State's programs that were ranked in, by the National Research Council had very strong gains in the last report. Penn State could not have become a world-class university without the vision of extraordinary individuals and leaders like Susan. Through good times and bad, Susan has been a steadfast supporter of Penn State students, our faculty, alumni, and friends. Penn State is very fortunate to have Susan as a dean, a colleague, and a friend to so many of us. As I said earlier, there are just a handful of deans whose tenures have reached 20 years. All of them have been men and most served in the early part of the 20th century. So we faced a challenging question. How do you honor such accomplishment? Last summer, alumnus Gene Shaken and Mark Llewellyn, Director of Development, secretly brainstormed ideas to raise $1 million. To the best of our knowledge, no college at Penn State had ever raised more than $100,000 in this way to honor a dean. But no other college ever had Susan Welsh. Jean and Mark started quiet conversations with many of the college's lead volunteers. And the response was simple and quick. For Susan, how much do you need? The ball started rolling faster, and alumnus Art Noggle suggested, why not two million? In early March, Jean sent a letter to about 1,800 college alumni and friends who have supported the college in the past, asking for their support in honoring the dean. The letter hadn't been in people's homes for 48 hours when our student callers started following up. Susan, I'm excited and proud to share that 280 donors, myself included, and many of the alumni, faculty, and staff in this room have made a gift in honor of your legacy at Penn State. 
Don has traditionally has a tradition of unveiling the new total dollars raised each year in a giant PowerPoint slide. So, uh, with a drum roll, <laughs> and in the tradition of Thon, let me ask for the total amount of dollars raised for endowments in honor of Dean Susan Welsh. As you can see, the total is $3,070,621. That is indeed a tribute to a truly remarkable person and a truly remarkable dean. Susan, would you like to say a few words? <laughs> was told a few nice things might happen, but this certainly exceeds any expectation uh, I had. I am so honored and touched by this outpouring of generosity and by the comments that uh, all of you who are on the video made. I, I really am touched. And, uh, thank you, Rod, for your nice comments. I am deeply thankful to all of you here tonight and to all of our alumni and friends who have joined together to honor me and, more importantly, the advance of our college. Uh, as the video said, I came to Penn State in 1991. I was really drawn here by the fantastic people who are already here and the high aspiration for liberal arts on the part of President Jordan. Uh, and because of the legacy of our faculty who had come before and the faculty who were here then, like Karen Bierman and Rob Hume and so many others, in 1991, liberal arts was a good college and a good university, but there was a demand for it to be better. And I was excited by the challenge of working to help make it better. And I'd say 21 years later, uh, we've come a long way. And working with all of you and with our faculty and, and staff to make it a, what it is today has been nothing but an honor and, and a privilege. And looking back, I, I have been so fortunate to work with so many smart and caring people. So and you, your moral support and your financial support has really been unwavering, even in the difficult days of the, of the last six months. And despite these events, let me assure you that Penn State is the same outstanding academic institution that it has been uh, and will continue to be so. So I'm thrilled that I... I'm really thrilled that our campaign is, is leading the way in, in many respects among our peers, but the dollars raised, the dollars you have given us, is really not about our campaign goals and the numbers, and that's all nice, but it's really about providing our students access to a Penn State education, about providing them wonderful opportunities, including the, meeting the challenge of the Paterno program. It's about the resources you've provided to attract and retain our outstanding faculty members, and to build the kind of graduate programs that have helped propel our advance to the top ranks. So together, all of us have built a world-class college in a world-class university, and I want to thank you for your part in that. So in closing, let me just say I'm humbled and I'm awed by your commitment. I know I speak for our faculty and staff when I say thank you. And I personally am inspired by your friendship, by your continuing support, and by your dedication to the college and to Penn State. Together, we've accomplished more than I ever could have dreamed of 21 years ago, and probably more than the members of that search committee uh, had imagined, too. So I am, look forward to continuing to work with you 
and on your behalf to enable our students, staff, and faculty to carry on the great purposes of Penn State and our college. And for this opportunity, I thank all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you.